Hey guys, Strong Stuff Studios back again. It's Alex. Justin the Orange Dream. It's me, Noah. And we are here with the first stop on the road to WrestleMania, WWE Royal Rumble 2014. <sighs> I'm going to put this down before I break it because, uh, <laughs> uh, well, you know, I'm not as upset as I was Sunday night, but uh, boy, WWE, um, I have never seen such a disconnect from the fans in my life. The this, whole show, really. The, yeah. the first, sure the only match that really showed connection with the fan was the opener, and we'll talk about that in a second. But there's first we got to talk about the pre-show, which we actually watched the pre-show and uh, we saw the Rose Brothers taking on the New Age Outlaws, and a match I figured would just be a nostalgia factor, let the Rose family win and m m move on with their merry way. Turns out the New Age Outlaws won the fucking match. The 50-year-old wrestlers who haven't been wrestling in God knows how long. At least not in not where these people have yeah. seen. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I had no words for this. I, first of all, if you're going for nostalgia, why the fuck was this on the pay-per-view then? Like, why would you put on the pre-show? It just felt so stupid to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, Just, I got nothing. title change, yeah, on the pre-show. Especially... It never makes sense. Especially, either. like... The roads were over, too. For yeah. Time. Especially, like, with, like, the, the roads who are, like, been on a fucking streak of good matches. Mm -hmm. And the New Age Outlaws, which I felt like that would probably, you know, help bump up the pay-per-view buys a little bit for some old fans who maybe. Yeah. I don't know. The whole thing... I, I know that there's a lot of people that like will defend this uh, because it's New Age Outlaws and, and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. and they had to get the belts off the roads. But uh, it didn't have to be them, obviously. Mm -hmm. It could have been someone. It could have been the Usos. It could have been the Real Americans. Yeah. Um, but the, one of the worst things is that when the New Age Outlaws came back, I think it was the Raw, uh, old school Raw. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They spent the whole match making fun of how blown up and terribly out of shape the Outlaws were on commentary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and now I'm supposed to believe that they can beat your best tag team? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you, I just feel like they just don't mm -hmm. pay attention. Yeah. This this was just uh, example one of Triple H's buddies getting over. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and the, so shockingly, this was like one of the least offensive things on the show, I actually thought. Yeah, this was. Yeah. Because, yeah, whatever. Because, again, like. Um, one, you took the belts off the road, which I'm okay with, I didn't mind, but, and also when the team, whoever wins, it beats the New Age Outlaws, that's going to be a pretty big win in notching their belt for beating the Outlaws. So, as long as they don't go into mini with the belts, which I don't think they should, I'm, I'll be okay with it, but, you know, I'm very hesitant about what they're going to do with this. Go I think forward. this is complete shit. I'm okay. Just gonna, I'm, 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 I'm not defending it, but it's just like, okay, I, I, can, I can see what they're trying to do. It's just like, uh, I, I want to hear that. Oh, okay. I can see what they're trying to do. I hear that all the time. Uh, don't worry, I'll have more to say about it. I think stuff. this is as stupid as a thing could possibly be. This okay. is as stupid as any other, other stupid thing. Right. Most stupid to say. Like, New Age Outlaw, like, who care? Who does this help? What does this do? Nothing. Man. This does absolutely nothing. It's a joke. These two old guys who cannot move. The one wrestling in a t shirt. The other one's still in pretty good shape, but he moves really slow. He was never that great to begin with. Like, Billy Gunn? Neither one. No. Billy Gunn was pretty good, but like, yeah. No. Uh, no. Okay. But see, I can see if they, if they brought back even guys who were that, like, awesome and that over in their time that the. New Age Outlaws were over just because they were in a faction and like by themselves were they ever that incredibly not over? Not really, no. They always kind not, of not enough to justify like a ten year or however how long yeah. abs or right. longer than that and absence. And, and when they come back and win the like, why do people who have been gone forever just get to come back and win the belts? Oh, we're gonna get people? that more. That doesn't the, make sense to me. And like of all the people you could elevate from your tag division, you bring in an outside team from. Like fifteen years, it was probably like fifteen years ago, and they get to win the belts. It's, Why? It's so laughable because yeah. if you put the in any other athletic situation, you bring an old fighter in, he's gonna get his ass kicked. <laughs> yeah. You bring in like John Jordan. Elway, he is not gonna win you a fucking Super Bowl. <laughs> you know? Like, come on, be realistic. These are the guys in the prime of their life and gold dust, but. <laughs> <laughs> who, who might very well be in his prime. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. I, that, I, That's I the thing, Gold Dust is older, but he actually looks the best he's, he's, he's probably he's, the best he's been in oh, years. Yeah, I just ever. can't believe the Outlaws can beat anybody on this roster. No, it's no, just it's looking at them. It's just not believable. Maybe they beat Kali. 
Okay. Well, let's actually get to the pay per view. Well, can, should we rate this match or just say I? No, we, we, I didn't really pay attention to this match. Yeah, because yeah, I didn't think anything. I actually watched the whole match, but the Rhodes run offense, like the whole match, then yeah. that was just yeah. one of the ends. So. Um, well, let's get to the main, let's get to the actual show, which we started out with Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt, and uh, wow, this was one of the best matches um that they I've ever seen start a pay per view from WWE in a long time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is one of the best it. openers I've for, in memory at yeah, all. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. this this was uh, like. I think maybe one of the best openers I've seen from any yeah any sh any company in a long time. Um, they this was a great match because one it told a fantastic story mm -hmm. of Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan's feud, which I was really really enjoying. And Bray Wyatt finally showed that he can wrestle and be a real mm -hmm. competitor in the WWE. Because like I knew the guy was a great storyteller, but like I've never seen him have a great match. This was a great wrestling match mm -hmm. from bell to bell. Um, I like that they got the Wyatt family to interfere, but then they they. Let me leave and like it was just let these guys two wrestle, and uh, yeah, just fantastic stuff from these guys. They really had some great chemistry. I, what I like about Wyatt is um, you'll see a lot of guys when a match begins, they'll have psychology kind of, then they'll go into a big wrestling point, and it's kind of out the window. They just go into the wrestling. Wyatt integrates his character so well into the actual, like the moves and in between moves, still doing his, <laughs> yeah. like his bending over, looking up thing. He um, is constantly in character. I love it. Never very scary. One, one thing I liked was like when he did the senton on the outside to Dana Bryan. Like he looks at the crowd like, "Why didn't you help him?" Yeah, like, that awesome. was really that good. Was great. Mm -hmm. You know, because like Dana Bryan is such the fan favorite. Like he's like asking the crowd like, "Well, why didn't you help him?" Like it's like that is just fucking awesome. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was amazing. He has he has the storytelling of a top heel in yeah, the WWE, no question. Definitely. Yep. And then you just I don't know. He I I loved the. The story they they included the story that had been going on all along into the match. Um, I like that they kind of play up the uh, the whole concussion thing of Daniel Bryan, like mm -hmm. why targeting his head, like you know, like doing like like that elbow strike he does, like when he's like grounded. That's really cool. I like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they did. Uh, I don't know what he calls the move. It was like sister a shell shock. Oh, his sister Abigail. Is, the, yeah. is, it, is it the the? Yeah. I don't know. We did it into the rail. Yeah, yeah the yeah. sister yeah. Abigail. Like crushed yeah. him with it. That was targeting the head the whole time, which including the real concussion into the. Angle. Um, yeah, it got really exciting. And the crowd was super very hot, hot for, for this. it. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that this, I, I love the story in this. I loved how uh, Brian uh, Brian knows so uh, he's so good at attacking big men and yeah. making it legit. Uh, attacking the legs, cutting the man down, and mm -hmm. things like that. Little things like that. Uh, these guys have great chemistry, of course. It's easy to say that when Brian's involved. Mm -hmm. uh, but like you said, this was definitely uh, Wyatt's coming out party. This showed what he can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to a lot more from him. Yeah. Um, this I could honestly say this could be a main event of a pay-per-view, and I have no problem with that. Um, and uh, yeah, and again, I love the finish. Like, catching him with the suicide dive into the Sister Abigail, that was awesome. And... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt, I think, is a, definitely a made guy right now in the WWE. Uh, what would you give this match? Uh, I gave this three and three quarters. Okay. I agree, three and three quarters. I went four. I love this match a lot. And I've seen guys give it higher, actually, than this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, match of the night, and uh, it, it, this, it went downhill from this fast. Oh, it drops it was, uh, from the sky. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Next up, Bowling we, had, balls, we had Brock Lesnar versus The Big Show, which going in... Nobody was excited for this match. No. Absolutely no one. Um, I thought they would do something, though. Yeah. So they come out, and Brock Lesnar, first of all, they start off pretty nice, because I thought, like, like okay, they're going to start hot, because Brock Lesnar comes out and immediately jumps the big show and like, starts brawling, like, okay, you know, we're going to actually see some exciting action. But the bell doesn't ring. Yeah, but apparently, oh, the bell hasn't rung you yet. You know, it rings like, every other time that happens. Right. <laughs> yeah. So they're in the ring. ring. Both guys were in the ring. Yep. Yeah. Both guys were standing, ready to fight. Mm -hmm. And so Brock Lesnar grabs the chairs. And then proceeds to beat the shit out of the Big Show with a chair for about ten minutes, I think. Seemed Way like too it. Long. Yeah. Seemed like it. Yeah. This was about as long a beatdown on a guy before a match that I've seen since like the World's Greatest Tag Team versus the Briscoes from ROH Final Battle 2011. It went on for that fucking was more ever. Of a match than this, at least. Yeah. But this, this, yeah. This never. Into then didn't they ring the bell when Big Show hit the punch or something? No, no, they they went outside and brought some more. Okay. Then they got inside the match ring or ring and started actually having a match, and it lasts for like a minute. And then Brock Lesnar hits the F five. Well, Big two, Show three. hit the punch at one point. Yeah, he hit it, but the match hadn't started yet. And like Brock Lesnar right. rolled to the outside and just this was. I understand why they did this. Like you know, oh, you know, Brock Lesnar looked like a monster just destroying the Big Show, blah blah blah. But if you're gonna do that, don't have the Big Show hit the KO and like kind of daze. Lesnar and like have some offense. Let him Lesnar just go out there and destroy the Big Show. 
I would have thought it was okay if they would have had a match and had Lesnar just win, and then after the match he beats him down yeah. and shows that he's remorseless. But this they made him look like a pussy, like he's afraid of him. They yeah. kept saying he's afraid he doesn't want to. Yeah, fight him. exactly. And it just didn't do anything for either guy. He did nothing for the show. This felt like they could have done this on Raw, and no one would have. I, I think that'd have been fine. Like you know, plus you know you could probably get some extra views, like because like Brock Lesnar having his first match on Raw in how many years? Yeah. Um, went way too long, mm -hmm. and. Exactly. Like, they made it look like, you know, they kept saying on commentary, like, oh, Lesnar doesn't want to fight the big show. It's like, well, you're making him look like a bitch now. Right. And the thing is, it was kind I, of productive. I feel like, and I've heard people say that this was to make him look like a monster, but it didn't. No. Like, attacking somebody from behind and that's then what I'm saying. If he had a chair, match, chair, and then just beat a guy with a chair after he's won the match, yeah, that's, that, that's yeah, a different that thing. Yeah. Anything. Uh, this was pointless and stupid. I heard that Big Show might have been injured the night before. Yeah. Right. Um, so. Instead of doing anything else, no. substitute. Instead of having just a quick squash match and that's it, they decided to have Brock Lesnar beat you. Put, it, beat him with a chair put another match minutes. on the show. Right. Yeah. Card subject to change. Yeah. yeah. You could either replace Big Show or just put it, and make that a short match, and put and a different match. You think match that people would have been calling for refunds if Big Show didn't compete? Oh fuck no! Oh, God. They've been they thinking them. No shit. They yeah. call in. It's like, oh, you finally box. didn't put yeah. Big Show on the show. It's an improvement. Um, I give this an NA. I can't. You can't really rate this match. I think. I'm going to go harsh and say 0, 0.0 Animal House style. I give this a dud. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, if it's a if it's rateable, it's a dud. If not, you know. It was, it was, like, a, it was like a minute long, so I can't really rate it. So. It, but it was like it was a the match itself with the whole thing. The match itself, the whole, okay. Yeah. It was as far as like a segment goes, like fine, I guess like it makes Lesnar look, look so much strong, but it's still like... The damn, I don't think it did anything. I don't know. Like, I think the, com the commentary hurt it more than anything. Like just by them like kept saying... Brock was afraid to fight the big show. That was pretty much true, though. Yeah, yeah. I know. yeah. this sucks. It's okay, totally sucks. let's yeah, let's go on to something else, which we haven't seen a million times, which is uh, John Cena facing Randy Orton for the WWE World Heavyweight Title. Um, these guys go out there, which Randy Orton, you actually clocked it in. How long was Randy Orton's entrance? It was two minutes and one second. And yeah. Cena ran to the ring, so yeah. tried to make up for it, but. Um, so these guys start the match and immediately. The crowd turns hostile. They were chanting boring. Within they, the first minute, they were yeah. chanting boring. Yeah. Um, who, you, you, which one do you guys want to talk about this? I guess I'll talk oh, about it. Um, go for it. This was reminiscent. It wasn't as loud or raucously against it as the Sheamus and Orton match from the Raw after Mania. But it was definitely reminding reminded me of that because they were chanting everything <laughs> every about everything but the match, basically. And this was Chained a worse situation. Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And RVD. The, the problem was the, the guys didn't do anything about it at the beginning. They just had... See, I think the problem with this match, Cena basically wrestled his normal match, and Orton really couldn't... It, works when, you have, it works when you have a guy who has some offense and can keep it flowing, but Orton was doing rest. He was starting out with <laughs> chin lock yeah, after chin, chin lock. lock. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, and it got sort of good towards the end, but then had a horrible finish. Um, yeah. I don't know. This match, it, it was... Really bad for about ten minutes. Got quite a bit better, but then sucked again at the end. So, mm -hmm. I yeah, I'm I'm definitely gonna agree with that. It felt like they did nothing. I don't know if it was because of the crowd that they just said it to help. They kind of them. acknowledged that it. it was Pearl Orton was like looking at the crowd and like smiling. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and you know putting his finger up to his ear and or like doing that. his usual dick thing. Well, the thing is, yeah. I like that because yeah, at least he acknowledges it. Yeah, he's a heel. He's supposed to do stuff like yeah. that, but. The problem I had was, and we made a joke about it uh, mm -hmm. the night of, was that Cena, in his matches, when he's a face, he does a lot of laying around and takes yeah. a beating. Yeah. But when Orton is the heel of a match, he does a lot of standing around and waiting for the face to get up. Yeah. So when you get those two in a match, nothing happens. <laughs> and nothing happened for like a good 10 to 15 minutes. Of, <laughs> it just felt like nothingness. And yeah. they kept throwing each other to the outside like yeah. every other yeah, week and too. You, that's such a cop out and, and a easy way to waste time. Mm -hmm. Just lazy. yeah, this, it felt like they were definitely like stalling for time at, and, during match. And during it did get better, mm -hmm. but it got better by going into finisher over. Basically, they, they, just, they did stealing finishers. Finishers. They did what Rock and Cena did at Mania, which is just but like they. Just I feel go like they, best. they did that for a reason. That was not their plan going in. I think that that yeah. was their desperate attempt to capture yeah. the crowd mm -hmm. and. To be it fair, actually helped yeah, it did the situation a little bit mm -hmm. until the finish, which yeah, like I, I another liked, disaster. Yeah. I did like them stealing each other's finishers because like I don't think they've ever done that before in a match. I did like to see Cena hit the RKO. That was yeah, cool. that was cool. And like Orton did a pretty good STF too. 
Yeah, yeah he, did. he did a better one than Cena. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, so it, it did work in a lot of ways, but yeah, like they were, they got you. Got, I think at, at near the end they had the crowd kind of with them, and then the Whites come out, stand there on the apron. Cena takes a swing at one of them, and RKO one two three. It's like okay, that was just. Mm-hmm. But they were chanting. Uh, let, uh, they were chanting. Boring. End this match. End this match. We want divas. We want divas. Yeah. We. Uh, this is awful. This yeah. is awful. That was my favorite. Yeah, and that one. Yeah. These are echoing oh, yeah. throughout the arena. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and it's funny because these are these are um, the smart fans, right? Yeah. The, only the smart fans do that. So yeah. somehow. Pittsburgh snuck yeah, I don't think Pittsburgh, twenty plus thousand smart people I don't think, into their building. I think Pittsburgh's a smart, like oh. kind of a smart girl, but they're not considered on the level oh, of no. a lot of. I mean, they're, they're not places. like New York or Chicago. Chicago. There's so many other London. places that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. Um, Pittsburgh's not really a, a smart. No, place but they they did not want to see this match. Um, they did not. What you end up giving this match? It's hard one to that rate. That one is tough. Um, I'm I'm, I'm willing to give this a two and a half because. It was a basically a two match, and then they, then when they actually started really trying to make the match better, it got better, and then they had a really stupid finish. So I give it two and a half. I agree with that rating. Um, I didn't really enjoy the match too much, but it had some stuff, had some good sequences, and I yeah. kind of bumped it up for the crowd entertaining. I agree, bit, honestly. Okay. So yeah, I think as a match, um, I would probably give it a two and a quarter, but the. The crowd was a lot of fun, so <laughs> it's hard. To, but as a match, I wouldn't recommend it. No, this is so, no. this is probably the uh, worst. I'm going two and a quarter. This is probably the worst Cena Bryant or Cena Ord match I've ever seen. What about TLC? You like that better? I like that. I, that one was better. I thought. I thought this was better than that. I thought the TLC match was okay. terrible. No. All right, and then we get the main event, the Royal Rumble. Well, let's let's basically start this from the beginning. We had CM Punk and Seth Rollins start the match. Mm-hmm. Awesome choice. Yep. Yep. Uh, I don't remember who entered number three. It was Sandow. Sandow, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, they started pretty well. They had Kane come out at number five, with, uh, which lasted like less than a minute, which was a really a waste of a pick, mm-hmm. I think, or a waste of a... Uh, yeah, okay. I don't mean to jump forward, no, but ahead. Kane ends up being the guy who eliminates CM Punk. Which everyone match. saw coming, I think. Why the hell was Kane even in the match? Wouldn't it have been better if Kane just came out that's, without him having plus, been in the match? That's what I thought. It didn't make sense for him to be, for his character... He hasn't been in a wrestling situation right. since being corporate Kane. Why is wouldn't it be better if he came out in a suit and eliminated? Yeah, him? I think that yeah. would work a lot yeah. better. Almost like when uh, the Vince McMahon Shane or Vince McMahon uh, Shawn Michaels thing, where like he's staying at the entrance way and Shane just runs in randomly and throws Shawn Michaels out. By the way, the way he threw out Punk was just complete bullshit. Yeah, it, like yeah. it was just he just runs in, pulls one. Yeah, it, there's it, no big deal made out of it. This look, happens. It looks so, so stupid. Over. And plus, it, it just, yeah, really. Of course, and it happened after the crowd had. Completely turned on the match. Oh, he was, and Punk was the last guy the crowd gave a shit. Well, well, well they did they, at the end. They but barely even yeah. gave enough. Uh, right, they, they really didn't have to. Yeah. yeah. Um, eventually, we got all the Shield guys in the ring, which which actually was really cool because like they they basically started throwing mm-hmm. everyone out, which was really and uh, it came down to CM Punk and the Shield, I think, at one point. Mm-hmm. And and Sheamus came out. Like, Shea, yeah, that was that. He actually got Sheamus like, actually got kind of over when he came out, but his overness was. Quickly um, yeah, snubbed out. out yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he got a pretty good pop. And uh, one of the best parts, I thought, was uh, El Torito entering the, entering the match. Yeah, you know was, what? it was the Before best part of okay, the match. Okay. Before we get in too far into oh, that, people, I feel like I look at uh, and people hated that. Like, they thought it was a waste of a pick. And, uh, <laughs> well, I it's thought just because they didn't have... Awesome. Awesome. Listen, I liked it too. Yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about wasted picks, Kane... Kevin Ten RC or what's Ten RC. <laughs> 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 the guy who looks like Ten RC. Nobody. The oh, the Alex, whatever guy, the Rusev. Rusev, yeah. Ten yeah. RC. I made a joke about Ten RC because he kind of looks like him. Alex Rusev is from NXT, and he's he guy looks that, like shit. Yes, of all the guys in NXT, he like Sami Zayn, know how to wrestle. Adrian Neville. He looks. He looks like he's never been in a ring no. before. They just put him out there and say, "Oh, you know martial arts. Just go out there yeah. and do shit." Yeah, yeah and this no is one of Triple H's guys, this apparently. Is so he is hideous. Get that fucker out of the way. Oh my god. Yeah, Sami Zayn would have been a much better pick. That would have been fucking awesome to see Sami Zayn in wrestling. But um, okay, El Torito. People don't understand. This guy is actually a legitimate, very, very talented. Mexican midget wrestler. And it's not Luchador, like he, Luchador, yeah. Luchador, yeah, he's fucking good. And a lot of it was like, oh, this guy was in the Rumble and other people weren't, but that's not like D- dude, up to him. And it's yeah. Like, if they didn't, and hey, he got he got the he got a pop from the crowd. The crowd was loving it. Right. So and plus, yeah. he did more offense than most guys in that match. Oh yeah. yeah. He, instead of the normal punch kick, he eliminated that you see, some. He, who did he, he eliminate? Did was it Santa? Was it Miz? He eliminated. No, he didn't. I don't think he eliminated anyone. No, he did. He, he kicked. He dropped. He, he eliminated somebody with a. He did a drop kick. Maybe it was like a hurricane. I thought it was like Miz. I don't remember. Maybe it was a Miz. I don't know. 
But uh, yeah, he he was awesome, and I loved that as he was in that rumble. That was, oh no, wait, Fandango, that's who. Oh, it was. Fandango, yeah, that's right. who it was. Mm -hmm. right. uh, yeah, so that was great. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, Kevin Nash came out and did nothing. Got a very bleh, you know people were Triple H's buddy Kevin yep. Nash. Yeah. Let's mention got eliminated by Roman Reigns, which uh, Reigns did really good this match. I know we're gonna talk about him at the end. Yeah. Um, so we get down near the end. And that crowd is hot for Daniel Bryan. They want Daniel Bryan in that match. That's all they care about. Yep. Batista point. comes out. Didn't there was I, I'd say from like twenty six on. That's all they wanted. Oh yeah. Was yep. Bryan. They didn't and care so, about. And then at a certain point, they started knowing he wasn't going to yep. be in the match. And then number thirty, and everyone's like, everyone's yes, they want we Daniel Bryan. We knew it was going to be Rey Rey Mysterio. Mysterio. And I have <laughs> never. Heard Rey Mysterio get booed. It that didn't matter much. who came out. If exactly. Was yeah. They were gonna get booed. They just. Oh my God. Because Rey Mysterio is hugely liked. Oh yeah, so. everyone loves yeah. Rey. But uh, man, that that crowd, the instant that number thirty happened, it was like a stunned silence for a while too. They just didn't react to yep. anything. They and then they care. fucking buried this match. They didn't give a shit. Batista but got. He just got. Oh, he got the destroyed. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, they, uh, it comes down to CM Punk, Roman Reigns, Sheamus, and Batista. So Punk, Punk gets eliminated, and the crowd is just like, way. they couldn't give a fuck less. Sheamus got booed. Batista got booed worse. It's just funny that Sheamus is getting booed after getting cheered when he came in. Yeah. Just hated he's, doing, he's doing the bro thing, yeah. and the yeah. crowd's saying, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Oh, that's awesome. Um, Roman Reigns, okay, I want to talk about Roman Reigns. He, had a, he eliminated the Shield members, which was really cool, I thought. And he had a star making performance. He eliminated 12 guys. He broke the, the record Kane set back in 2001. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like it's really a shame that that the Daniel Bryan thing ruined this match for so many people because Roman Reigns had a star making performance I thought in this match. Yeah, a lot of people aren't going to remember. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's that, a, the thing is though not to. about uh, the Rumble especially is yeah. that they like to use it as something they can go back to and show clips from. Count numbers. Yep. So the, that's all of it. it hey, yeah, that's, that's a good point. In another two years no one's going to remember yep. that the one that Reigns beat the record was the one that yep. sucked. But he, he, well, he, it, didn't, it wasn't a terrible match. It was just terribly booked. Yeah. yeah. Um, he actually, I thought he had, he did really well in this match, and I, I'm actually like, I'm on the bandwagon. This guy getting pushed to the moon because I think he's, I think he can do it. I'm worried. I like the idea of pushing him. I think he's got talent. Um, the problem I have is that I don't think it should be at the expense of the other two. I agree. Yeah, I, and I, I don't think it will. I, th I think that both guys. I, well, the thing is, like, um, Dean Ambrose is great on the mic, and um, Seth Rollins is such a great in-ring guy, and like Triple H has liked him because he put the NXT title on him first. He was the first guy to win the NXT title, and that's his baby. That's his pet project. So that's a good sign, I think. So we'll see. Uh, and again, like both those three guys have just been like MVPs of the year. So I think that's gonna help. I think he's been impressive, but at the same time, he's been mainly used to wrestling in situations where he's not in a singles match. He doesn't have yeah. a lot of experience in singles matches still. Yeah. So I hope they don't try and push him hugely I, as a single star too soon before he's ready. I, I hope they kind of slowly build him. Yeah. I would kind of be okay with him like winning the IC title pretty soon and like having a nice strong year leading up to WrestleMania next year. Yeah. Which then he can have a big profile. Whenever match. they take a guy like him and just push the shit out of him right away, it always yeah. it's it cool. always drops. It's, it's gotta be a nice steady push. It can't be like shoved down the throat, you know? Yeah. Um but let's talk yeah, like so the end of the match comes is Roman Reigns and Batista and the, the crowd crowd's all for Roman Reigns. Yeah, they were anybody good. but Batista. Right? Yeah, let's be clear. This wasn't the crowd loves Roman Reigns. It was they really didn't want Batista to they, win. They wanted someone new. Yeah. And so they Batista, wanted anybody They probably would have cheered for Kevin Nash yeah. for him. <laughs> <laughs> Nash versus they hated, Batista. Yeah. They hated um, Batista. Um so Batista eliminates Roman Reigns and Usually, Nash has wrestled more in recent years than for them than no, Batista yeah, has. Yeah. <laughs> um, usually, like even when the heel wins the Rumble, there's, there's some cheers. Pop, you yeah. know, like Alberto got like a pop, Randy Orton, Orton got winning, a pop. Yeah, yeah. Batista boo. just boo. The chorus of boo. Hated it. Oh my god! And Batista just had that smug look on his face. Like, he just, apparently flipped off. The he flipped off crowds. He was mocking Daniel sure. Bryan. He was well, basically, he they, the crowd got the best of him. People, yeah. I mean. He can get on Twitter and say whatever he wants. Oh, but yeah. the fact of the matter is is that you nobody wanted you there and they made they were vocal about it and you handled it like a child. Yep. And that's just the bottom that's just how it is. And let's let's remember this guy's supposed to be a professional yeah, I mean, wrestler. Say you what know. you want about Cena, you can never imagine Cena. Oh no, like Cena, Cena. He gets that kind of abuse all the time. Cena will go, yeah. Cena will go hug the, the guy who's got the I hate Cena shirt on. Right. Right. So yeah, I mean yeah. And, you know, Randy Orton's kind of like that, too. He's he, kind of a... He's he's actually, I mean, that's just acting like a baby. I mean, they come back and they push you, and, you know, you get to win the Rumble and mm -hmm. go to the main event, and you can act like a child. Yeah. After the yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, this Rumble, I think, was... 
it was okay. It wasn't a bad rumble. It was hard to enjoy. It, but yeah, like when I realized that Daniel Bryan was going to be in that match, I basically zoned out and I stopped caring. <laughs> I kept watching, but it just felt like things were happening and yeah, no I, meaning to exactly. it. Exactly. I, I stopped because as soon as the Daniel Bryan didn't come out, I'm like, oh, this Batista wins. Like I knew it immediately. That and the thing was. is, it wasn't like, oh, well, the rest of the show is going to suck. It was kind of like, I don't care. I, it dawned on me mm-hmm. that they. It's not that they don't understand. They don't. It's not that they don't know that Brian's over. It's not that they don't know that he. We want to see him. It's that they will not push him. They don't. They don't want us to see him. They don't want. I just feel like it's, it's such an ego. It's big. just yeah. so obvious that Triple H is such a huge influence. All his friends who get put. It yeah. doesn't matter if you're over or if people like you or you get a reaction or it's anything. It's who you know. It's and specifically Triple H apparently mm-hmm. because all his friends are getting pushed. Mm-hmm. If you're not Cena or one of Triple H's absolute best friends, you're not going to get pushed. Yeah. Um, I gotta say, man, I have n- like the wrestling community like, online just exploded after this match. I have never, in all my years of being a fan of WWE, seen so much negativity. Mick Foley, show Mick Foley show. Yeah. just destroyed WWE for, like on his on online. But can I can I say this though? Beyond yeah, beyond the, this is on, everyone wants to see Daniel Bryan win, and it's. Yeah. It's shitty that Danny Bryan didn't win, but I think this is a slap in the face to everybody on the roster. Exactly. That the guy who went away and did movies and has been gone for four years gets to instantly come back. They've had guys come back and get big pushes. They, I don't. At they've least, never it, had a guy just come back who hasn't been on the roster forever and just yeah. win the Royal Rumble the, instantly. The, the Rock at least had a couple matches before he won the WWE title and was. And that's the Rock, but Batista yeah. is not the Rock. No, the thing is though, the Rock had a feud going into WrestleMania exactly. for over a year prior to yeah. that match. Mm-hmm. Remember before. The WrestleMania before mm-hmm. he came in and yeah, twenty seven, yeah, he attacked Miz and and Cena. Cena. Mm-hmm. But even before that, they were on Twitter having like a, a few, yeah. So there was a build. Now you're bringing in a guy that hasn't is talked about wrestling. Not the Rock no. by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> no. And a great example of that is the promo that he cut at the Royal Rumble. Oh, it is it, one word. He said one exactly. word. He said exactly. He just stares at the camera. Exactly. It's like. That's it, but the, the thing, you're right, exactly. I would have rather that's what have I say when Goldberg I, when come I back and win the Royal Rumble. When I, saw, when I was watching the Royal Rumble, it, I couldn't even get upset because you look... You, you, it's just crowd, Yeah, Yeah, and the crowd said it all. Like, I don't even have to say it anymore. The, we've been online for over a year bitching about the booking and our guys, the guys you like aren't going to get pushed. And it's not just the guys we like, it's the guys no. everyone likes. It's exactly, the, yeah. and there it is. The proof's right there. Yep. And I, I think the the thing is that I think the fans of I think even the, the the casual fans for the WWE have finally had enough. They're finally saying, "Look, this is the guy we want, and if you're not going to give it, well, we're going to fucking boo the shit out of everyone." Well, because if, it, for for a casual fan, they too, I mean, every fan wants to see new guys get up and get chances. That's the thing. And seeing the same guys come back out of nowhere, and just come back and be like, yeah. "We don't care about Batista yeah. anymore." Plus, and, like, look at the story for. Brian. And I made a joke about it in a past video, but what is the story? Basically, What's the story the for heart, anybody? Exactly. He's a face. You want kids to look up to him. Yeah. What If the kids look up to him, what are they going to learn? You can work as hard as you can and as and for years, but it's not going to be. You're only going to get this high. Yeah, you're going to get about this high, and that's it. And there's right. no... Uh, that, they had that whole angle. There's no hint of that authority except for Kane being out there eliminating uh, CM Punk, but there's no stuff in your Triple H. So that right. storyline just seemed to be absent. It exactly. Seems to not so even the be next night that on oh, yeah. they yeah. they acted like, oh, oh it was all big. Yeah. Thing. Fuck you. <laughs> and so they, But they have Batista going after Orton. They have... Brian probably facing Bray Wyatt. It doesn't seem no, like anything has to be. He might written. be in the chamber, but. Oh, really? Um, no, I mean, Cena facing Wyatt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cena Wyatt is what I meant. So, this whole big storyline they did around SummerSlam and after SummerSlam seems to just have dissolved. Yeah. And the thing is, is look at where Brian is now. He hasn't won a feud since SummerSlam. Yep. He lost the feud with Orton, mm-hmm. and he just lost the feud with. Wyatt. And if they were going to do something, I don't know, are they even going to do Triple H and Punk? They yeah, they're, gonna, they're, they're doing but that. But Triple H was nowhere on the show. They're going to do it, okay? It's going to be yeah, Punk yeah. first. I'm just saying. Punk, let's just, before you go any further, the video before the Royal Rumble, you said, there's no doubt in my mind that Daniel Bryan will be in the Royal Rumble. <laughs> I know. I, Care, I, choose your words why. Okay, look, here. I'm thinking Punk and Kane at Elimination Chamber. 
Punk and Triple H. Had, but of course, it's, Triple H is gonna be a fucking. My, my, I don't even like. My to, point is, why wouldn't they have Triple H be involved at all if he's right, gonna be? Poor story. I know. Like, what, what the fuck is new with WWE? You know. Well, we're just pointing these I know, things I out. I know. But it, I'm just. I was so. I have never been so depressed after a wrestling uh, after a WWE show. I honestly was like depressed all day yesterday, just because I'm just like I was just like baffled. Like, how can they be this stupid? The how is, can they constantly be this stupid? Can you name one time in the re in history of wrestling where one guy was more over than anybody else at all in the world, <laughs> and the quit. company decided not to push him? No, because well, companies are not stupid. Exactly. WWE the is only a, thing that came close is maybe Ziggler, who yeah, <laughs> was not pushed by the same is, company. <laughs> this is the one thing about Brian is that, like Ryder, they pushed him, they pushed him, and then they pushed him back and pushed him away, and then you forgot about him. And right. they wanted to do the same thing with Brian. And right. it, it was telltale; you could tell. And it, the, crowd the farther forget. they push, the more the crowd. Well, is the crowd back. did largely forget about Ryder, but the fact that they're not forgetting about Brian—that's I mean, exactly yeah. is Brian. It shows why next again. It, it, it just goes player. back to the thing of WWE fans are sick and tired of not getting what they want, and it's just like we've decided. Like they have universally decided, we want Daniel Bryan, and you better give it to him. And you know, it's I'm like sick. just keeping Stone Cold as a mid card no career right. <laughs> jobbing. I'm tired of hearing the reasons why apparently uh, Brian can't be a main eventer. It's here, well, here's Bret just, Hart was a main eventer. Okay, yeah. I love Bret Hart, but Bret Hart was a guy who just wrestled and he was a main eventer, and he did not really connect with the audience. No, with, like he didn't have any great he, promos. No, he was not that good of a promo. He didn't yeah. connect with them on the same in the same yeah. way. He's a great. Sorry, Bret, you're one of my favorites. Yeah, but I'm just saying if he was a main eventer, why can't Brian be a main eventer? Because mm -hmm. Triple H has got the fucking ego of. Just, it, it, limitless. It's, limitless. Yeah, it's it's, 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 it's like the universe. It's constantly expanding. It's a continuum. Yeah. It's almost as big as Daniel knows. Bryan has done something that WWE can't do. He got over the crowds by himself. And you and, know what? What's crazy is that you hear people say, "Oh, he he's not a main eventer because he doesn't sell merch or he bullshit. Doesn't, he doesn't draw ratings." Bullshit. Let me tell you something about the merch situation. One, you can pan around those arenas and you see. Tons and tons of Brian shirts and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, look at half of the merchandise they're trying to sell. No one's going to buy a t shirt with a fucking goat on it. Give me a No break. one's going to buy a fake beard. Right. Come on. Okay, listen. You want to actually, you know, why don't you actually get someone who's actually a fucking original thinker and draw a good Daniel Bryan shirt? We want Daniel Bryan lunchboxes, we, people. I, I want a fucking, I want a American <laughs> ice cream bars. Yeah. yeah, I want a, I want an American Dragon shirt. Is what I want. Put that, that would sell some fucking but, shirts. And the, him not being able to draw. Well, he, bullshit. Okay, I'm just Get gonna say the all the, all here. the things against him are bullshit. Except one is that Triple H doesn't think he should be the guy. Yeah, that's exactly. the one. It's exactly that's it. all. Mm -hmm. the, Get, this, listen, tri and that, that outweighs all the other stuff. Yep. Yep. And guess what? Triple H, you're not the smartest guy in the world when it comes to wrestling. Okay. Let's let's here are the guys who are smart to wrestling: Mick Foley, Jr., Paul Heyman. All those guys love Daniel Bryan. Those are three of the smartest men in professional wrestling ever. Okay. Triple H is not one of the smartest guys in wrestling. Well, he's, he's kind of smart for getting himself over. Oh the bunch, no, he's he's smart for marrying the boss's daughter. That's what he's smart at. <laughs> For being called a legend when he's really shouldn't be. Oh, but. no, he, he, you know what? I'll, I'll say he has had a good career, but he's not a fucking legend. He's not The Undertaker. He's not Stone Cold. He's not The Rock. He's not Mick I just hate he's watching none of them. I hate watching all these videos and like on documentaries and stuff that, and hearing people say, like, oh, we do what the fans want. We're here for the. It's not. No, you don't. It's, it's just so hypocritical. No, no you, you, you do what you think is best and you decide that, like, this is what we're going to do and because we like this guy and we don't like him. And another thing I want to touch on is. Would you, people please stop telling me that Vince McMahon is a genius? <laughs> please, for the love of God, do not say that. Vince, it's not. It's not true. He's a vicious, ego-centered human being. He, no, he's, he, all he, he cares about is the greed yeah, and the money. He's, that's smart, in. he's, he's a, a good man. businessman. Yeah, a he, genius. Is he, he a was, genius? No. He was a good businessman. Yeah, he's a good. He's good at beating people in business. Okay, Be, by being ruthless and aggressive. But the thing is. He's not he, a genius he, at wrestling. He gets by. If he were to adjust the booking, and this is throughout the history of WWE, if he if they would have booked differently, mm -hmm. you'd see. I, I think that the business would be so much better off. Oh, the whole absolutely. Business would absolutely. Be. Of course. And to say that he's a genius and the the business is in a decline, 
And people say, oh, wrestling, you know, it's dying. No, it's not. UFC's killing off. No. No, it's not that that wrestling's dying. It's that it's It's slowly being poisoned. Yeah, it's being murdered. Listen, wrestling is not dying, okay? Because you look around the independent wrestling scene, it's thriving, okay? Because people surprisingly like watching wrestling. They don't like watching the bullshit WWE's putting on. They want the real wrestling. They want ROH, Dragon Gate USA, uh, PWG, AAW. They want these wrestling companies that actually do with what WWE isn't doing, which is listening to the fans and that's giving exactly, them what they want. That's exactly it. If WWE wouldn't have to, if they only change one thing, they could go from yeah. <laughs> just being a product people watch and just get frustrated with to being. This could be seriously like a main. I don't know if it could be a mainstream thing, but it could be you know getting. The ratings it once yeah. got, you know, yeah, the, the, Era. there's a there's a reason. If that. they just the reason Attitude Era, everyone wanted Stone Cold to be the guy, and he was the guy. They just want to see Stone Cold kick ass every week, and they gave it to him. Yeah. But now they're not giving the fans what they want, so of course they're not going to tune in. It's like, why do I want to tune in and just see the stuff I want to happen yeah. consistently not happen exactly. every week? And let, let me be clear, okay? The Attitude Era was not that good, okay? Stone Cold was basically the best thing about the Attitude Era. There were not that many good matches. There weren't that many good feuds. There was very stupid shit all throughout the Attitude Era. But the one thing that was really but the fans good loved it. was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold was the best thing about the Agit Era, and that's a fact, okay? You know, you can watch some of the old, old Agit Era's like Raws or pay-per-views, and they're not that good. But, but the one thing that is good is Stone Cold. But they transitioned from the Attitude Era, which is when they gave... The fans loved that stuff. Yeah. So they transitioned to that to the Triple H wins era, is what I like to call <laughs> yeah. the era following it, and just immediately Triple H always wins, and the good guys never got the best of Triple no. H. And since then, it's been Triple yeah. H gets his way. And again, it, it you know, there's a reason that a small company like PWG sells out that building in like eight minutes every single time they have announced a show. Because they put on matches the fans really want to see and just like, I want to see this match, I want to see this guy wrestle. It, they give the fans what they want and the fans respond with money. It's not, I mean, it's not even always giving the fans what they want, it's just ever giving the fans what yeah. they want. It's not like these smaller companies just give the fans everything they think is the best. It's just that those absolute most important things they want to see, they eventually do it. Yeah. And um, sometimes what the fan, if the fans were booking the show, people say, oh, if the fans were booking the show, it would be terrible. Of course it would. But at the same time, never doing what the fans want to do. Isn't it worse? Yeah, that's worse. That, that's how you... Doesn't make any sense at all. They, they, they want you to invest in a story mm-hmm. for months on end mm-hmm. that just fizzles. Yeah, I'm sick of... What, what, there's got to be a payoff. There I'm has to sick be and tired of the wait and see philosophy. When was the last time that has paid off ever in the WWE? And you know, they say like, oh, if, if you hear like a WWE talk about it, it's like, well, the good guy always has to win at the end. It's like, I guess unless his name's Cena, that's not true. No shit. Right. Exactly. God. <laughs> I'm just so fucking frustrated with this company right now. And uh, I, all I can say is for Batista and Orton going into WrestleMania, that's what they really... Good luck. It, you might as well be trying to f- fucking fun. climb Mount Kilimanjaro because you guys are going to be fighting an uphill battle with that crowd. That the crowd, crowd will turn on that immediately. That is going to be the it. most hostile crowd ever in professional wrestling. I, they're going to be murdered out there. <laughs> and I have no sympathy for them. Good luck, boys. Yeah. You're going to need it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, honestly, if I was there and that was the main event, I probably would fucking leave after the sh- after the match. Like, okay, I saw the match I want. Oh, what's next, Brian but- Orton Batista? Yeah, I'm going to leave. So yeah. I would have just left the Royal Rumble for number 30. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I, I was actually, part of me was hoping there was just a mass exodus. Apparently some people were leaving, but I didn't really see it, so oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, well, the, 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 I just... I've never seen such backlash from the from fans to the WWE after one show. And they're just I, gonna hope massive. to wait out and hope people forget, but I don't. It's think not it's gonna, gonna happen. happen. Like as long as long as Daniel Bryan's still with the company, it's gonna be you know a hostile work environment. Or as long as they're generally you know just putting over guys that <laughs> old guys who people don't care about. Yeah, them. get these old fucks out of my wrestling business. Mm-hmm. And it, the and it's still the guys go online and the wrestlers and the people from the industry want to say it's the internet fans and it's the smart fans are ruining things for it's well every fan no, in the crowd just booed exactly. the shit out yeah, of yeah. we don't even have to say it because it's right there slapping you right in the face yep. if yeah if it's a niche fan then i guess that niche was that entire Pittsburgh. audience yep. was it's just the niche it's yeah. all in yep. pittsburgh that all the negative people the live in pittsburgh <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, 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 oh I, I'm cur- I'm curious what they're gonna do with the DVD. Like, if they're gonna they're probably gonna pump up cheers in that fucking thing to make it look like Batista just, actually was cared about. Just edit it, just so it shows all the eliminations and nothing in between. Right. Just yeah, <laughs> whatever. Uh, well, this was a very long video, but yeah, I think we, we didn't we, even rate the show. 
Are we gonna <laughs> I, rate? I'll give it a five. Uh, that, I think I'm being generous. I'll give it a four. Everything, yeah. all the booking on the show sucked. Every last yeah. bit of booking was terrible. Terrible. The only thing I think I can agree that it was like actually well booked was the Bray Wyatt's Brian match. But even then, like I didn't I like. I like that match, but the booking was shit for yeah. that too. Brian right? shouldn't have gone. Yeah, shouldn't have lost clean. No, I know. I do. I um, agree with that. Yeah, I'm gonna go with a four. Also, this was all shit. Right. This I mean, was I'm probably lower my rating than terrible. But whatever. The only reason to go out of your way to see this would be Brian and. The crowd. If you want to see that's WWE it. shit all in there. Right. If you want to see crowd. If you want to see WWE embarrassed in their second or third biggest show of the year, this is it. Probably, I, I probably would say second. This biggest. was yeah. this was the equivalent of if you were at like a Duke basketball game and the Duke crowd was booing the Duke team. That's basically what <laughs> yeah, it would be yeah. like. Oh man, <laughs> I, it's it, Mania's gonna. Like, I'm, I'm echoing the. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm gonna enjoy Talk WrestleMania. Coach K. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna enjoy WrestleMania for the match. I'm gonna enjoy it for the crowd. Just. Shitting all over stuff. Alright. Alright. That's, that's our uh, review and, and rant of the WWE. And, uh, it was cathartic. Yeah, that was fun. That was good. That was good. That was like our therapy. Yep. Mm -hmm. Alright, guys. Take care. See ya. See ya.